Hi, welcome to another video. Today we're going to have a look at this Tronic battery charger. This is one of those impulse buys in uh, Lidl. I saw it and now in the box and it said universal battery charger and it stated that it could charge lithium batteries. And uh, yeah, being a little bit tired after work, I didn't really bother to read the box thoroughly. I just grabbed it, chucked it in the trolley and went and paid for it. It was £14.99, which I thought, well, if it can do lithium batteries, um, along with all the other ones, that's not too bad price. Well, as I also picked up some AAAs and AA rechargeables. And a 9 volt PP3 rechargeable. Now, this is kind of where the problems begin with this unit. Having not read everything as well as I should have done, Turns out that, yes, it would charge AAAs, AA's, C-type, D-type. It won't charge PP3. So I thought that was very interesting, that they're selling the PP3 batteries as rechargeable ones, along with all the other rechargeable batteries, right next to the charger, yet you can't charge them with this charger. <laughs> so, yeah, real shame on that one. The next problem I came across is the lithium side of it. It turns out that that's what this is for. And if you, modern day phones, most of them have got built in batteries, you can't change them. The ones that you can change the battery on, that's designed for this. So you've got little sliders here, which you can then adjust for the prongs to fit your battery. And then this goes back like that. You can also spin it around if you want a slightly shorter area. And then you just these little pogo pins push up against there and that's how you charge living batteries. So unfortunately, you can't use it to charge, say, an 18650, which I was hoping it would be like that. No, unfortunately not. But however, you can charge standard Nicomet Hydrite, etc. in it. But I have found, if I can just get the wires out here, 18650 battery in a little holder and a couple of wires which we can actually connect up to these little pogo pins and that will actually charge that battery so I thought there's a possibility I could work out a way of taking some of this out and actually mounting one of these holders in there and then just hard wiring the wires down in, inside and then that might work quite well for charging these but you can obviously only charge one at a time now it came with a basic instruction manual which gives you the various specs etc. It's quite aggressive on the uh, charging of the uh, sort of Nicomet Hydrite NICADs. Uh, let's find it. There's somewhere in here it does state the charge current, but it's a, it, the charge current varies depending on how many batteries you've actually got in it at the time. But anyway, it's around one amp that it does for most of the charging. The Livium one is only done at 500 milliamps. It won't do any higher than that. It's also got a USB port on the back of the unit. And that again seems to be about 500 milliamps output. So not brilliant. But yeah, it's a little bit aggressive because I found that putting like these batteries in, they were coming out pretty hot. I mean, a bit too hot for my liking once they had... Uh, been fully charged. As you see we've got a bunch of LEDs across the top and we've got these little indicators. So basically if you've got a red light flash and then a green light flash and that alternates then that means it's refreshing the battery. I did find one battery that I chucked in there that was probably completely and utterly dead and so that flashed for a while before it actually started charging. There's also a pre-charge now it's interesting it didn't do that with the uh, flat battery. I would have thought it should have done the pre-charge rather than the refresh one. Standard red for charging, green for fully charged and you get continuous red flashing if the battery is obviously faulty or you insert it the wrong way around. What it doesn't seem to be able to do is notice if you've inserted a battery that's not rechargeable. Um, it probably varies between batteries because I tried a couple non-rechargeable batteries. One, it actually just sat there and said it was charging it. And another one, it sat there for a couple minutes saying it was charging it and then decided to do the uh, battery defect thing. 
Now as far as I understand the refresh mode is supposed to operate after 13 hours of the battery being in the unit. There's no manual controls, you can't just chuck a battery in and get it to refresh it or anything. So it'd be a case of if you've got a battery that's fully charged, just leaving it in the unit for 13 hours and then it would go into refresh mode. Which I'm not particularly happy about, I wouldn't want to leave batteries um, unattended being charged on this unit or any unit. So we'll plug it in and I'll show you what it does on the screen. Okay, so I've got the unit plugged in now and I've still got the Livium 18650 there connected. And as you can see, we've got come up there, Livium iron 90% charged, and we've got charge light there that is actually red, um, although it's showing up. It's red there if you put it in that angle there, it's just because I've got the bright lights from above on that one. So hopefully you can see the screen there. Now, if we take one of these batteries, these have all been fully charged up in my testing, so they won't be super flat. So we can pop that in there straight away, saying it's charging, and we're at. Well, that's interesting, that one's coming up as 30% now, but these were all fully charged unless I missed one out. So we will try another one. I don't like these uh, sliders and battery contacts much. So that was coming up as 30 as well. So that's interesting because I, I was what I was going to point out is that it's quite accurate in uh, knowing what the percentage of a battery is. Uh, if you charge one to 70 and then put it back in, it does tend to come straight back up at 70. You see what I mean about these? You, you've got to kind of pull back on them really rather than try and slide them in. And uh, that one's coming up as 30 as well. 40 now, so they are, it is going up rapidly, but they were fully charged, but obviously I don't know how much it's just wasting sitting there in a packet. But that kind of gives you the idea of what the display does, so it's nothing particularly exciting, doesn't give you any battery voltage stats or anything like that, so it's certainly not a very intelligent charger, but then what do you expect for the price of £15? But it certainly serves its purpose for doing these batteries, and with a small modification, you can certainly do a single 18650 at a time. I'll put those batteries back in there. Again, I don't know the quality of the batteries, they're just uh, tonic, tronic band branded, same as the uh, charger is. I'll disconnect that living battery. So, like I say, USB port in the back, and that's pretty much it. So, the charger does get quite warm in its operation and that probably contributes to how warm the uh, batteries are getting. Ah, there we are, there's some specs on the back there for the uh, charging. So we've got so 6 times 1.4 volts is doing it at 1000 milliamps slash 500 milliamps there. Uh, so yeah, 1, 000, so 1 amp for double A's, 500 milliamps for triple A's. And then you've got various different ones like if you're doing, you know, type C or D, 4 of is at 1000. One lithium iron, 4.2 volts, so 500 milliamps there. Six 1.4, so that'd be double A, triple A with USB, so that'd be doing the 500 milliamps for the double A and triple A, and just 250 milliamps on the USB. And then we've got again lithium iron with USB, drops it down to 250 milliamps. For both USB output, oh it's actually one amp so my apologies there it's one amp rather than half an amp. But as you can see that varies depending on how many batteries you're charging at the same time which is to be expected I mean probably you know, much more expensive more intelligent chargers got better circuitry and can deliver you know the same amount of current to each battery as required. It's quite a quick charger not super quick I'd say it's probably sort of three or four hours to get a double A fully charged up but that seems pretty reasonable the specs say it should be sort of seven hours but again these weren't you know completely flat when I got them I think they were sitting about 10 20 percent uh, it'd be a follow-on video at some point because I want to a take it apart and uh, have a look and see what's inside and look at how I can fit this in I mean I can get it to stay there like that, but it's not so not so, so, you know suitable already. So I look at yeah getting rid of this mechanism and uh, finding a place to put that in, and then that will serve as a charger for that. So hope you found the video useful. If you've got any comments, please do leave them, and catch you for the next one. Cheers.